Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is part two of a talk on the features of charity as tazkia, meaning purification of the heart. And in this part, we focus on the differences between the Islamic and the European conceptions of charity. We start by a brief summary of the first part of the talk which uh, described the great transformation in Europe from a traditional Christianity based society to the modern secular society that we have today. So this change brought a change in many dimensions of thought. Briefly, some of the main um, changes occurred in the conception of society as just a collection of individuals working there separately for their own separate goals. As opposed to a traditional society which thinks of society as a community of people all working together for a common goal. Uh, when people are working together, then they have to subordinate their own individual personal desires to the collective desire. And um, wealth is not seen as a good thing because it allows people to break away from society. Uh, as opposed to this, in an individualist society, everyone is supposed to be allowed to do whatever they want to do, and then freedom and wealth both become desirable goals. A third major uh, change was the creation of a labor market in which you could buy and sell people's lives as a productive factor. So the turning of human beings into human resources for use in factories for production of wealth. Uh, this was an important part of the change. Uh, similarly, just like people could be bought and sold, so the planet Earth could be brought and sold. And so the relationship of man with his environment, the idea that the Earth uh, nurtures us and we should also protect it and preserve it, this was lost. And finally, money was created in order to allow uh, trading of goods for an abstract purchasing power. And because the abstract purchasing power was able to purchase all things, the planet Earth as well as the lives of people, it became the most important status symbol. In the modern secular society, individuals pursue their personal life goals, normally pleasure, without regards to the society as a whole. And so in this um, framework, the idea that people can cooperate, generosity, charity, giving to others, all of these become problematic. So because actually individuals are observed to do these things, the theory, the economic theory, tries to understand why this could happen. And so there is a book by Axel Rald God, Evolution of Cooperation, which shows that if people cooperate uh, with each other, it's because of their own personal private benefits which occur in the long run from this sacrifice in the short run. Similarly, there are other analyses. This, this idea doesn't work very well, that people are ultimately selfish and they cooperate only because uh, cooperation is also part of selfishness. So one idea is that people get feel a warm glow inside their hearts. They, they derive pleasure from the act of charity. Uh, so all of these ideas, uh, similarly corporate social responsibility, it is also based on the idea that if uh, corporations do good, they do charity. This enhances their reputation and enables them to make more profits in the long run. So ultimately, all of these ideas reduce to the idea that charity Yani selfishness is the primary motive and if cooperation is done, if generosity and charity occurs, it is all due to long run selfishness as opposed to short run selfishness. These are all ideas which are very strongly in conflict with Islamic ideas. Just like understanding the Western ideas requires looking at the history of Europe, so understanding Islamic ideas requires looking at the history of Islam. In particular, 14 centuries ago, uh, Islam, the teaching of Islam came to the desert of Arabia and they lifted very ignorant and backwards Bedouins 
to world leaders and these teachings created a civilization which was the glory of the world for a, more than a thousand years and this revolution was created by a knowledge which was given to man as the Quran the opening the first few revelation ayah of the Quran say read in the name of thy Lord who created and they say about tell about the Ron that Allah um, al-insana bil qalam Allah al-insana ma'alam ya'alam that Allah Ta'ala taught man by the pen and taught man that which he did not know so it was this knowledge which came which lifted the Bedouin to world leaders but it was also prophesied that Islam came as a stranger and will become a stranger it is obvious that Muslims no longer have this knowledge because they are no longer world leaders the Quran promises that if we have the faith and if we have the knowledge and if we have the amal the action on this knowledge we will be given the khilafa the leadership of the world but so uh, because we have lost this knowledge so we are no longer we are at the bottom rank of the world civilization just as the Bedouin were in the age of ignorance the dark age of darkness which was there before the coming of Islam so why did Islam become a stranger to the Muslims the greatest obstacle to understanding the teachings of Islam comes from the Western education that we all receive this education teaches us to think about the world in certain ways and it gives us a theory of knowledge what is knowledge uh, and basically this theory says that knowledge is what was developed in the West over the past few centuries and these ideas which we learn from our education uh, make it impossible for us to understand uh, the true genuine Islamic teachings so how did these ideas become common among the Muslims well it was a long process of uh, global conquest which was done by Europe over the past few centuries which colonized the world and spread Western views in the Muslim lands so to recover the Islamic teachings we have to start at the very beginning and that beginning is the intention the purpose of our life and this is clearly specified in the Quran which uh, ayat which says that everything I do my worship my sacrifice my living in the salati wa nusaki wa mahiyaya wa mati lillahi rabbil alameen everything is for the sake of Allah so uh, with this first step only and with this beginning only it becomes possible to make sense of the message of Islam now in the western educational system we study for years and years and there is no mention made of Allah and there is no mention even made of the purpose of life this is because in modern secular thought life is without meaning because uh, life arose the universe emerged from an accident and life emerged from an accident so once there is no afterlife and there is no purpose then economic teaching teaches us that the only purpose of life is to maximize the pleasure that we get from consumption uh, in fact this is opposite of what the Quran says that the those who follow their idol desires those who worship their nafs will go to Jahannam and these are actually two opposite religions Jeremy Bentham created this religion in opposition to Christianity and he said that morality will come only from those things good things are good if they bring us pleasure and something is immoral or bad if it brings us pain and this is specifically opposed to Christian teachings and also opposed to Islamic teachings European motivations for charity come from sympathy feeling compassion for others and also from social responsibility but both of these motivations have been weakened in the great transformations uh, now Islam recognizes and appreciates both of these uh, both of these motivations social responsibility and sympathy and compassion but this is not the primary the reason for charity the root of charity comes from the idea that we must sell our lives and wealth in order to buy Jannah and we must struggle to 
get the pleasure of the akhirah, not the pleasure of this dunya. <coughs> so, in this world, we are not free to do what we want to do. Even if we have sympathy and even if we have social responsibility, we must obey the orders of Allah in these. And that is the primary motivation. The love of Allah and his prophet and his deen must override our love of our fellow man, our families, our business and everything. And so charity is done out of obedience to Allah and out of the love of Allah. They feed the poor for the sake of the love of Allah. This is uh, ayat of the Quran. So there are two directions which Allah Ta'ala has shown us. One is the direction of good which is lies in obedience of Allah and the other is the direction of evil which lies in the direction of following the pleasure of the nafs. So even if as according to western concept we feel happy when we give to others this should not be the driver, the source of our action. The source of our action for charity must come from the obedience to Allah. <coughs> 